nine things to know before you go to SeaWorld in San Diego. I'm Chris, this is Yellow Productions. Later, I'll be joined by a traveling princess and we're gonna tell you everything you need to know if you're coming to this theme park. First thing to know before you go is about tickets. All tickets currently have to be purchased online, but in addition to purchasing a ticket, you also have to purchase a reservation. Correction, you purchase the ticket and then you have to make a free reservation for the day you want to go. And what makes this extra confusing is the e-tickets that we printed out, it said right on it, this is your ticket and reservation. So at the front gate, when they asked me, where's my reservation, I said, it's right here. And they said, no, 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 all the tickets say that it's not your reservation, you have to make a separate one. Also parking, parking is $25. There's more premium parking for closer parking spaces, but the parking lot is all pretty small. So the $25 parking, I think is pretty good. The second thing to know is the park map has gone digital. There's no more park maps at the gate. If you want the park map, you have to download the SeaWorld Discovery Guide. It's their app. It has a map on it. Not super useful, so I'd actually suggest you find the big maps in the park. Maybe take a picture of it, look at it that way, or ask a staff member if you can't find things. The app is helpful for the show times, though. The third thing to know is about shows. One of the coolest things at SeaWorld are the shows. When you come, you should plan your day around the shows. Consult the mobile app, consult the website, look at the times, get to the shows 15, maybe even 30 minutes early. We came for the first dolphin show, started at 11. We were here at 10.40 and all the seats were already gone. We're here at the Orca Encounter. This is the Killer Whale or Shamu show. This starts at noon and at 11.30, it's already starting to file in. Particularly with social distancing, there's less seats the other really good show to check out is the Sea Lion Show. Those are the three major shows to watch, but if you can only see one, definitely see the Orca Encounter. Now, I wanna point out, you can get wet. There's a wet zone down there. Pay attention to the wet zone. You'll get really wet there. So if, if your kiddos wanna get wet, bring a poncho, bring a raincoat, bring a change of clothes because you really do get soaked if you're down in the front seat. One show the kiddos might really like is Storytime with Big Bird. If your traveling princes and princesses are about as small as ours, they might not appreciate the killer whale show. They might appreciate Big Bird a little more. The next thing you need to know are about the animal attractions. There's a ton of great animal attractions at SeaWorld, our favorite. It's definitely the penguin encounter. There's a moving sidewalk where you go by over 300 penguins, including emperor penguins. Also make sure not to miss the shark encounter where you can go through a moving sidewalk through the middle of the shark aquarium. Lots of big sharks, pretty scary. And then at the end of that, you can compare your size to a megalodon shark. That's a pretty big mouth. The penguin encounter is really good to go in on a hot day because it's nice and air conditioned in there. But if it's too busy, there's also penguins on the outside. And you can watch them from these really nice, socially distant viewing pods. Now, right next to the shark encounter is another really cool aquarium. This one's called Turtle Reef and it has a whole bunch of really big sea turtles in there. These things I've seen in pictures, but I've never seen up close and personal in this same way. Really neat to watch these huge animals swim on by. In addition to the aquarium style exhibits, there's also a number of touch and feel style exhibits. The tide pools are open for kids to touch and feel. I will say our traveling princess at 16 months is probably a little bit young for this, but some of the older kids were definitely enjoying it. Starfish, sea urchins, and sea snails in here. Ever popular manta ray petting pool is open. These are known as stingrays, but these will not sting you. They've got socially distant petting areas in here as well. Now the smelliest and noisiest animal exhibit is definitely the sea lion feeding area. Here for a few bucks you can get some fish and feed your friendly, friendly, very hungry sea lion. The feeding fish costs six dollars for four fish and make sure you come at a time when they're feeding because they don't do feeding all day. Now also noisy but slightly less noisy than the sea lions are the flamingos. A little bit smelly too. I always love coming to see the flamingos. Something about seeing these colorful animals just makes me feel like everything, everything's gonna be all right with life. And of course like any good theme parks all the major attractions have gift shops. The coolest thing in a gift shop here I thought were these shark slippers. That's right, they are shark slippers and they even say SeaWorld on the bottom. The fifth thing to know is about the rides. SeaWorld has a lot of rides and if you haven't been here in the last few years they've been building more and more rides. 
though currently due to the pandemic, many of the rides are actually currently closed. You'll find a few of them open, but some of my favorites, like the big tower in the middle, the cable car, those are all closed due to COVID restrictions. One ride that was open was Shipwreck Rapids. This is one of SeaWorld's original rides, one of their raft rides. If you ride this one, beware, you're gonna get really wet. Now, if you really got wet and you don't have a change of clothes and you can't stand it, buy Shipwreck Reef. There are these shipwreck dryers. For $6, you can get the whole family dry in here. Good news, it takes credit cards. Now when things are busy, SeaWorld often has this service called Quick Q that you can pay more money to bypass the lines at many rides. It was not operating currently because, well, not many rides to use that. Now most of the rides for the kiddos are in the Sesame Street Bay of Play, and actually most of the rides in this area for the little ones were open, though the things that were more like the play areas, like playgrounds in Captain Kids World over here, those were currently closed. The sixth thing to know is about food. SeaWorld does not allow in any outside food like theme parks it's all pretty expensive what we've got here $36 for these sliders poke bowl and some cheesecake there was a seven seas food festival we were here that's about how much these things cost you you can bring in outside bottled water they allow that pro tip freeze it and then halfway through your day it'll be still cold for you if you have a baby like we do our traveling princess they also allow you to bring in baby food from the outside. Bottled water, baby food. Other than that, I would say plan to just probably have lunch in the park and then dinner, maybe have that when you leave outside. The seventh thing to know before you go is when to go. And you know, any time of year is good. January and February is the least busy, but there's the least going on in the parks. Summertime, busiest, there's the most going on. Spring break, really busy. You know, during the pandemic when we're here, the park is capped at like 35% admission and it still seems pretty busy. Now if you are planning to come here, the eighth thing you should know is what hotel should you stay in? The closest hotel is called the Dana. If you stay there, it's about a 20 minute walk. There's a Hyatt that's about a 25 minute walk. The other close hotels are the Bahia and Paradise Point. By the way, this thing right here, the Air Bounce, this is like a trip down memory lane. This is one of my favorite attractions in Captain's Kids World. Makes me feel just like a kid again. Now the ninth thing to know before you go is if you like cookies, please like this video. It really helps with the YouTube algorithm. And if you are coming to San Diego, I've got more videos on San Diego, like travel tips to come here, walking tours of Mission Beach. So if you wanna check those out, you'll find a link in the description below or up here on the screen to watch them. As usual, I won't say goodbye because I'll see you right here.